Hey y'all, it's Ryan, and today I want to talk about what happens in our immune systems when our body needs to defend against bacteria. And to do that, I'll use an example of what happens when you get a splinter. So imagine you're getting out of a pool, and as you step out onto the deck, you get a large splinter in your big toe. So on that splinter are many bacteria, and within a few hours, you'll notice the area around where the splinter entered is red and swollen. And these are indications that your innate immune system has kicked into gear. And so in your tissues, there are these roving bands of white blood cells that defend you against attack. And to us, the tissue looks pretty solid, but that's because we're so big, right? So to a cell, tissue looks somewhat like a sponge with holes through which individual cells can move through pretty freely. And so one of the most important defender cells stationed in our tissues is also a famous innate immune system player, the macrophage. If you're a bacterium, the last thing you wanna see is a macrophage after you've gotten into the body on that splinter. And here you can see what a macrophage looks like devouring a bacteria. You'll notice that this macrophage isn't just waiting around until it bumps into the bacterium, right? No, this macrophage is actually sensing the presence of that bacteria and it's reaching out a little foot to grab it. But how does the macrophage know that a bacterium is out there? Well, macrophages have antennae, which are like receptors on their surface, that are tuned to recognize specific danger molecules that are characteristic of common microbial invaders. For example, the membranes that surround bacteria are made up of certain fats and carbohydrates that we wouldn't typically find in the human body. And those foreign molecules then represent this like find me, eat me signal for macrophages. And when the macrophages detect these danger molecules, they begin to crawl towards this microbe emitting these mo molecules. And when it encounters this bacterium, the macrophage first engulfs it in a pouch, a vesicle called a phagosome. And this vesicle contains containing the bacterium is then taken inside a macrophage where it fuses with another vesicle called a lysosome. And lysosomes have powerful chemicals and enzymes which can destroy bacteria. But they're so powerful and so destructive that they could actually kill the macrophage itself if they were released inside of it. So that's why they have to be kept in vesicles. And using this strategy, macrophages can destroy an invader without ever injuring itself. And this whole process is called phagocytosis. So when macrophages eat the bacteria that's on that splinter in your foot, they give off chemicals that increase the flow of blood to the vicinity of the wound. And the buildup of blood in this area is what makes your toe red. Some of these chemicals also cause the cells that line the blood vessels to contract, and this leaves space between them so that fluid from the capillaries can then leak out into the tissues. And it's this fluid that then causes the swelling. Additionally, we have chemicals released by macrophages that can stimulate nerves in our tissues that surround the splinter. And that sends pain signals to your brain to let you know that something is not quite right in the area of your big toe. And lastly, this is my favorite part. During their battle with macrophages, or excuse me, during their battle with bacteria, macrophages produce and give off proteins called cytokines. And these are hormone-like messengers which facilitate communication between cells of the immune system. And some of these cytokines alert monocytes and other immune system cells that may be traveling near, in uh, nearby capillaries that the battle is on. And they encourage these cells to exit the blood and to help fight the rapidly battling and multiplying bacteria. So here's a quick summary of our body's response and strategy. We have a huge perimeter to defend. So we station these guards, macrophages, to check for invaders. And when they encounter an enemy, they send out signals, the cytokines, that recruit more defenders to the site of the battle. And macrophages can then do their best to hold off the invaders until more immune reinforcements arrive. And because the innate immune response involves warriors like macrophages that are programmed to recognize specific common invaders, our innate immune system usually responds so quickly that the battle is over in just a few days. All right, y'all, that's all for today. Click like on the video and please click subscribe if you want more content like this.